You're welcome. River State has been rocked by political turmoil for months. We've all been talking about it, observing it, following it. Uh, this has culminated in threats of impeachment. In fact, processes have begun and have been withdrawn. We've had court cases and even the demolition of the State House of Assembly complex. Now, this week, however, a glimmer of hope, you might call it, emerged following a truce talk between the governor of River State, Fubara, and his predecessor, Yes, Mwike, who is currently minister of uh, the FCT, Nigeria's capital, amongst other stakeholders. Uh, these talks were brokered by the Nigerian president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, after which the stakeholders signed a set of resolutions or directives by the president. I don't know if we can look at that on our screen, but the, they had their signatures appended to that. You know, we saw it. However, the next day, there were insinuations in some quarters that the River State governor did not sign that document. Now, on this program, right here on Politics HQ, that next day, one of the defected lawmakers insisted, right here on this program, that Governor Fubara signed the document because he was there, he was at that meeting, he explained everything to us. Now, this position was further affirmed by the River State Commissioner for Information, Mr. Joseph Johnson, who confirmed the authenticity of Governor Sim Fubara's signature on that resolution or document. And um, he went on to say that the governor will implement the agreement reached amongst the parties because he is committed to the peace process. So the words of the current Commissioner of Information, River State. However, however, a former Commissioner for Water Resources in River State, he's an elder statesman, uh, Sir David Briggs, has alleged, has alleged that President Tinubu subtly threatened the River State governor into signing that agreement. Now, Briggs was one of the elder statesmen invited to that meeting. Uh, let's listen to an interview he granted uh, and to what he said. I was there, so I'm a witness. So what I say is primary, not secondary. We are invited for a meeting, but that was not a meeting, because a meeting means opinion will be sought. There will be discussion of, in between both parties, and resolutions will be reached. But that is not what happened. What happened is that Mr. President walked in with a written resolution, addressed us, and declare that what he has in his hand is a presidential proclamation, a presidential directive. And at the point, we draw and emphasize the fact that he's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Therefore, he can whip. And anybody who tends to say no to what he's saying, it has consequence. That is not democratic. That, in a simple layman word, is a threat. He wrote the resolution, but refused to read the resolution, handed the resolution to Dr. Odele to read and interjects. And each time he interjects, it comes with a subtle, polite, smiling insult. <laughs> and thereafter, he asked the governor to speak. Now, now let's get it very clear. What do you, if you are in the position of the governor? What will you do? Get up and go? Say no to Mr. President with that kind of subtle but energetic threat? But one of us asked him a simple question. And to be specific, I don't care, Master Michael Hassan. Same should do this. Governor should do this. Governor should do that. You have not said, watch those 25 or 27 assembly members that defected from PDP to APC without consulting their constituency and constituent, what they should do. And of course, you can see the situation. The president's reaction was very clear and simple, but very, very dangerous. It was a concrete intimidation to say he's a leader. In fact, he withdrew on his seat and said, I'm the leader of the, of the APC in Nigeria. And you are telling him that when you born babies, when babies are born into my family, I should ask them to go. No, they can't go. We are welcome them. And I want anybody who was there to contradict what they have said. 
Quite interesting uh, uh, claims made there by the former River State Commissioner for Water Resources has held several positions in River State, uh, Sir David T. Briggs. Also, there are indications that the governor may have breached the number one item uh, in the resolution that they reached, that number one item, which was um, to direct his team uh, to withdraw all cases, you know, at the courts that have been instituted against the River State House of Assembly. There is a case currently at the um, River State High Court sitting at Ishokbo uh, in River State. I think that's in the Quarry local government area. And when there was a resumed hearing, what the counsel to the River State Governor, uh, D. O. Koro Essie, and told the court that he is that he does not have uh, any instruction from his client, this is uh, Sim Fubara, who appended his signature to that um, agreement to withdraw the case, he'd have to go consult. And then the case was further adjourned uh, uh, to another day, later date. Well, we're joined tonight by uh, Tamino Williams. Mr. Tamino Williams is a former chairman of a cricket local government area in River State. And also, uh, Tunji Abayomi, he's a legal practitioner, pro-chancellor, at Dekunle Ajasi University on those state, both men are lawyers, so it's uh, perfect, uh, perfectly poised for an interesting conversation. Gentlemen, it's a big pleasure uh, to have both of you on the program tonight. Thank you. All right, all right. Uh, uh, well, while Governor Fubara's signature has been confirmed uh, by the Commissioner of uh, uh, Information in River State, um, do you believe uh, that both parties are genuinely committed to upholding the truth? agreement or, you know, are there still underlying tensions that have a potential uh, to resurface? Please, let's start with you, uh, Tunja Bayomi. Well, my feeling is that I think they are focusing on the end instead of the procedure. Uh, my understanding is that the end is to achieve relative peace in River Street. Uh, these are adults, experienced politicians, well respected in their community. And it came to certain terms, which they endorsed in an attempt to achieve relative peace instead of continuation of chaos. I think. Um, the people to tune down the agitation and allow peace to reign amongst the political leaders in the state. That's my thing. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 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 Professor Bayomi, interesting. Um, you want uh, a peace to reign. But is there as far as you consider genuine, uh, uh, a solid agreement in place that you think, since the uh, signatures have been confirmed and the governor's people have said, oh, the, the rumors that are flying around uh, are not true, um, he signed it. And he's come out to say uh, um, no price is too big to pay for peace in a speech he gave at Palmol University recently. Um, do you think now, now the, 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 the ground has been laid for a solid, you know, a, a peace in River State and for the parties to move forward? I think, I think that really should be the next step in order to perfect the effort to achieve peace. And I think the leaders of River State, instead of condemning and knocking off the effort made by the president and political leaders like uh, former governor of Judy, I think they should find a way to increase the avenue of peace in River State. And I think if they do that, there will be peace. After all, these were friends before. They were co venturers in the political journey. Uh, they, they say in Yoruba that it is uh, the fact that came that uh, turns um, a song into a proverb. So we turn so much to want war instead of war for peace in a political society. So in my view, uh, Governor Fubara hasn't done anything wrong in looking at the global picture 
and they are hanging some other news such as fish. And I also don't think the president who invited them for that purpose has done anything wrong. Condemning okay. Governor Fubara, condemning the airport to achieve peace will only create more chaos, in my view. I mean, you cannot disregard the influence of Wiki in the political development in reverse, nor can you disregard the power and influence of the governor. Nor even the influence of the president after River State is part of Nigeria. So what I think they should really do, the leaders, instead of all this condemnation, is to work with what we have now in order to enhance and make the peace more perfect. That's what I think should be done. Okay. All right. Thank you, Professor Abayomi. Uh, uh, Tamara Williams, uh, good to have you. Um, you. You can lean back into your chair so we can see you very well. You can just lean back into your chair. Yes. Uh, we need to sit back a bit, lean back into your chair so we can see you uh, properly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so, so President Tinubu's involvement in, in all of this you know, has drawn mixed reactions. I'm so happy uh, that you're both lawyers because uh, there are legal aspects to this. But as far as you're concerned, Tamla Williams, was the president's intervention a positive step towards peace? Or would you say or agree with the view that it, it potentially introduced external pressure uh, and uh, thereby complicating the internal dynamics in River State? Co Coffee, I, I, I can't wait for you to finish. Uh, my pleasure to be on the platform with uh, Dr. Tunji Abayomi. I'm meeting for the very first time uh, face to face. I've read about him. I know his pedigree, but in law, even in a court of law, the, court, the cardinal issue is what are the issues for determination. That's why every court judgment must address the issues for determination. Now, bring that analogy to what happened in, in Asorok. You heard what um, our elder brother, David Briggs, said, that they were not in a meeting. They went there to take directive from Mr. President. Now, the question is, the eight-point uh, resolutions, do they address the substantive matters that led to this crisis? If yes, fine and good. But if it is no, it means that what was done was merely a treatment of the symptoms of the problem are not the problem. Now, um, I had my Leonard Senior, um, uh, Dr. Bayomi, talk about not condemning the president, not condemning Wiki, not condemning uh, Fubara. That is good. He's talking as an elder. But in terms of development, in terms of our constitution, he is a constitutional lawyer, if I mistake not. Can the president direct the governor of his state? To say, take this piece of paper, you must sign it, you must abide by it. Section 14, subsection, uh, I think, 2, talked about that the sovereignty belongs to the people. That is from the people that the, that the government, you know, derive their sovereignty. Fubara is a governor has been elected by the people of River State. Whether it was, it was brought by, 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 by Wiki or by anybody, at this point, the same material. Can you bring him into a sorok and say, go sign this document without preferring solutions to the substantive matter? What brought, what led to the point where Governor Fubara and Minister now became at loggerheads? What brought to the point where the Constitution of Nigeria provides that if you are a member elected to a house and if you defect, if you defect to another party, section 109. Subsection 1, paragraph G, say you vacate your position. And then that the House of Assembly can sit wherever they like. My little thing is that there are, there are judgments of the Supreme Court which say that for a house to sit in a particular place, there are condition precedents that must be met. My take, Kofi, is that all of us in River State want to have peace. We want to have development. And that is why we commend Governor Fubara. That for him to have been level headed, to have been cool-headed, to have seen beyond the small screen, to say, I accept. And he has made 
clear categorical statement that he did sign the document and that he wants to abide by the terms of the, of, of the document. That is him. The question is, will reverse people accept that document? Because reverse people are the sovereign. Governor Fubarak is an agent of reverse people. I can tell you, the smallest child in reverse state sees Governor Fubarak as an instrument of liberation because reverse states have been right. under bondage. Let, sorry, let, let, me, let, me, let me lean back. The president of Nigeria, um, uh, Ashwaju um, uh, 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 Tinibu, was a member of Nedako. Nedako fought Abacha. Why? Abacha was oppressive. And when he came to the time when he was governor of Lagos State, coffee, the issue of the local government funds, he went to the Supreme Court. Now, can Buhari come today to say, um, Mr. President Tinibu, I want X and this to this? Will he comply? Legally speaking, constitutionally, the action of the president is not appropriate, it does not conform with our law. But politically, it can bring a solution. But for that to be a solution, every party, there must be a win-win situation. And that was why when Dr. Nesmaka asked that question, that question was mm. actually pertinent and nobody right. could answer it. Okay. Uh, 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 Tunja Bawimi, the, the claim now, um, I mean, you might want to respond to that if you want to, what he just said. But the claim now is that... Um, uh, from those who, some of those who attended the meeting, is that uh, the president issued uh, some form of threat, you know, um, in order to cajole or to force Fubara to it sign that agreement. It was that take this my directive or leave it. If you don't take it, there will be consequences. There's no precedent like that. Yeah. Anyway, like anyway Tamar Williams, I, I want us to allow the um, uh, okay. the, the professor uh, the, okay, to, uh, to answer your okay, counterpart. So, Mr. Baimi, your, your thoughts that, on this. Uh, how credible do you think these allegations are? That uh, the president issued subtle threats or what amounted to, uh, or could amount to threats? My learned friend also raised that issue, and I will deal with that. The first thing is that he spoke about uh, asking what, he, what are the issues. You know, setting out the issues, but we, don't, we, have, we have passed that stage. You cannot talk of issues when there has been a signed agreement. So, issues have been settled in the agreement. Now, there is this question as to whether the president directed, ordered, or coerced. Well, Governor Fubara, the governor and the representative, authentic representative of River State elected representative to whom the sovereignty of River State is delegated has not said that he was directed, coerced, forced, or intimidated to sign the agreement. And he was the signatory to the agreement. So when we hear from him, then we will pay attention. Any other person's voice with due respect, has to be handled with suspect. Now, my friend spoke, my learned friend spoke about um, uh, the issue of um, people joining a different political party. Yes, Section 109 of each thinks about that. But we must also remember that he said that if there's a division in your party, those who left are claiming to division in the party. At any rate, that section is not self-executing. The legislators, the main legislators, by virtue of their election, until they are removed, in order to wait, by nature, for example, if they die, or by law, either by way of impeachment, or by the decision of court. Until that happens, they remain authentic, lawful, legitimate, constitutional legislators. So, with regard okay, so, to uh, the uh, law, Mr. Barry, are, you, are you saying that, that, that the, you're saying there are only two ways that legislators can be removed? Number one, you said by an order of court, or number two, by what? By, by nature or by law. Those are the only two ways. By nature, if, for example, they die. 
by law. For example, they can resign or they can be removed. So for example, by impeachment or any other means, usually by impeachment or removed or for one reason or the other. If they, they haven't gone through removal by nature or by law, they serve their term until the end, until the next election. So uh, do, what, what, what we have right now, Tunja Baimi, does it not amount to removal by law? Because uh, 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 Tamar Williams cited section 109, subsection 1G, uh, and we'll add subsection 2 as well to it. Yeah, but what does section 2 say? I have the constitution here. 109, 1G. What and does it section, say? Section, section, yeah. Because the relevant portion is like that. If you join another political party, and there's no division, well, 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 sir, you, you, can open, you can open to it just so that you help us out with since you have your constitution that I'll be appreciated if you want to. If I can. Is, is there been a party whose election to the House of Assembly was sponsored by a political party? It becomes a member of another political party before the expiration of the period for which that House was elected. Provided, and this is provided to that his membership of the later political party is not as a result of a division in the political party of which he was previously a member or a major of two political parties. So what I'm in essence saying is that you can activate this section only through the court. So can you it read two? Maybe you, you wanted to read two, so if you read that as well to, 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 to enhance, because I, I said subsection 1, uh, G and 2. I'm not sure. I, I hope this section has not been amended. The Speaker of the House of Assembly shall give effect to subsection one of this section. So, however, that the Speaker or a member shall first present evidence satisfactory to the House that any of the provisions of that subsection has become applicable in respect of the member. It will give effect to the, to, to the section. Yeah, but how do you give effect to the section if? The people claim that there is a, a division in their political party. This is the issue. So it's not just a matter of so simple that the speaker... Again, that's what, what happens if the speaker is one of the people that left. And which speaker are we talking about? For example, if, one, if the speaker, anti Bello before the crisis, is actually one of the 24, 25 that left, yeah? where do we go? So, the issue is quite clear. It is not self-executive. You have to go to court. Until the court pronounces, by law, they remain legislators. Until they are removed by nature, any legislature, until it is removed by nature, it remains a legislator. Legislator. That's just... Okay, all right, Tinger, by me, we, before we go on a break, let's allow Tamla Williams to respond to that. Tamla Williams, uh, you've heard from, your, uh, you know, your colleague... Um, he says the courts are the ones, apart from nature by law, the courts are the, is the one that can determine whose seat is vacant. So we have section 109, uh, uh, subsection 1G, and subsection 2 of the CFRN yeah. 1999 is amended. What's your response to what um, Mr. Bayomi has said tonight? Um, um, with, 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 uh... and feel free to read subsection 2 if you want to do so. And, and, and yeah, with one utmost G. respect, yeah, it's just that uh, uh, I can't, I can't bring my constitution down. But if you go down to section two, you will see that when these gentlemen they cross over, provided there is a division. Now, to determine that proviso is a thing that is an issue of law, an issue of fact. But the Speaker of the House is empowered to declare vacant the seats of people who have crossed over without a division. And the next step he is to take is to notify the Independent National Electoral Commission that look, there are vacancies in the House. Now, these processes have all begun and they've been concluded. Now, what they have done, the gentlemen, was to go to court. But before they went to court, the process of declaring their seat vacant has been concluded. But that's not the main matter that I want us to focus on. The main matter is that now that 
Their seats have been declared vacant. There is a new speaker. A budget has been presented to the new speaker. And those who are legally, in the eye of the law, are the lawful members of the House of Assembly. You are now asking the governor that go and represent the budget to those persons who have whose seats have been declared vacant. And mark you, it is what, it was what the governor went to court on the issue of the House of Assembly. It was the speaker. The speaker was not party to the meeting in Asorok. So when it's not a party to the meeting in Asorok, can he be bound by an agreement in, to, to which it's not a party? Now, again, legally speaking, legally speaking, when a law... But, 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 but Cameron Williams, he, he, he was there. Uh, um, uh, from what I'm told, Eddie is he was part of that meeting, even though he didn't sign. Now, now, if it was if it was in the meeting, eh, and he did not sign the agreement, is it binding on him? My little senior knows there's not binding on him. But more importantly, when once a law has been enacted as the River State Appropriation Act 2023, that law cannot just be set aside. That is that is what is you know, making my hair to stand. That the president who we respect as a beacon of democracy. We be requesting this gentleman to go and do an illegal, unlawful act. Okay, Tamla I'll come, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you uh, before we go on a break. Uh, yes, Tunja by me. You want to respond to that? But but uh, section one zero nine subsection. Yeah, uh, Mr. Baimi, if you if you permit me, just quickly read what it says because I really want you to to, to get to the heart of this because we know that just yesterday, only yesterday, the the uh, the, the president of the Nigerian Senate. Uh, Obon Gosselak Pabio declared the seat of David Umahi vacant, you know, by proclamation, and he hit it, you know. So uh, he didn't go to the court. So I want you to respond to that. But subsection, uh, section 109, subsection uh, 2 of the Constitution says, uh, Speaker of the House of Assembly shall give effect to subsection 1 of this section, so, however, that he, uh, the, that the Speaker or a member shall first present evidence satisfactory to the House uh, that any of the provisions of that subsection has become applicable in respect of the, the member. And, and Edison here, he, he made a statement saying that they have the evidence, and he said it, um, that they had received, you know, video clips showing the members declaring that they are moving and waving APC flags, uh, and they had seen it on social media, announced in the news and all that, so they are aware, you know, he has to say it. So no. what, what's the reaction to this, especially the fact that uh, it, the same thing was done yesterday by Gosul Akbabio, Senate President? There are two types of evidence that must be provided satisfactorily. And I'm talking of evidence that is not impeached. Because if there is counter evidence, then you have to have to go to court. The first evidence must be that they have left the party. The second evidence relates to the proviso. That is to say, there is no division in the party. There, there are no factions, etc. All of that must be presented. So my position is that even if the speaker makes that pronouncement, how does he execute it? The people will not cut because that self -self. the speaker is not a dictator and is not a court. So the issue that now, in the case of River State, is even more complicated because now we are talking of a situation where um, I think about 24 legislators as against four. We are talking about of a situation where Governor Bubala presented a budget of four. That's unconstitutional. You cannot present a budget to four members of an elected house. The, the Constitution defines quorum. Quorum is when you have the majority. And until they have been removed, you have to subscribe to that quorum. So what I'm in essence saying is that what the president has done is to ensure peace and order, more importantly, order. Because now, if you look at the situation, 
the works of Governor Fubala will right. become unconstitutional. Okay. So can't so. All right. Unless he's able to, to secure the majority in the House, at least in the interim. Tunja Baibi, uh, thank you so much. Tamar Williams, thank you. So we want to go on the break. When we come back, I have more questions for you. Uh, for those watching at home, please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Politics HQ right here on New Central TV. My name is Kofi Bartels. We're still discussing the unfolding River State political situation or crisis, if you want to call it. Our guest tonight, Tamara Williams, former chairman of Cricket Local Government Area, River State, uh, senior, he's also a lawyer, senior lawyer, uh, uh, Tunje Baimi, uh, legal practitioner, pro chancellor of Adekula Jassi University, Ondo State. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, your time. Um, uh, back to you, Tamla Williams. Um, uh, this this talk of threat, you know, uh, uh, issued by the president. Um, as far as you're concerned, uh, how credible um, are, are, are those 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 um, that's that statement? Do you think that it's possible that a president of Nigeria could make a threat, you know, to very senior um, uh, elder statesmen? and to the governor of a state in Nigeria. Do you think there's any truth to it? And if there's any truth to it, in your opinion, is Mr. President, uh, in any of this, whether it's with the agreement, the directives, the intervention, uh, is he breaking his oath of office? Uh, like I said, section uh, 14, subsection 2A, Provides that, or in that constitution, that that the people, the sovereign, belongs to the people, and it's from the people that the government obtains or draws their power from. And section one of the constitution provides that the constitution is supreme. Then section one, subsection three, says that any law, any act that is at variance with the constitution is to that level of inconsistency, null and void. The issues are purely constitutional. One, the government of River State is, 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 is represents the sovereign of River State. He ought not take order, directive from any other person. That is true in the case of Lagos State. When the president was then governor of Lagos State, he created local government. The president then of Bassin just said, no, don't create local government. He said, no, it is my constitutional right. He went ahead Created local governments. Till today, those local governments are still functioning from 1999 till then. And you know what happened? He went to court and challenged the, the action of then, the then president of Basinjo. And the Supreme Court said that though he has the power to create local government, they were in court and that he should refund the money to legal state. President Basinjo ignored the, the, the judgment order of the Supreme Court. So on that area, the matters are in court. The budget has been passed. It has been signed. It's not an act of parliament. Can a meeting in Asoro go and nullify all that? I can tell you that it is elementary. It is common sense that that procedure is not right. OK, so, so Tamla Williams, are you, are you, you're saying the president uh, is uh, breaching the constitution. Um, which, yes. which, 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 which section, uh, which aspect of the, of the constitution you can't readily recall? First of all, section. section one talks about supremacy of the constitution. Okay. Section one, section one, subsection three says that every authority, every law must be, must be in compliance. Then section six gives the power to determine, to adjudicate, to resolve matters to the court, to the judiciary. So if the president is not satisfied, he could ask that on general to go to court. But Tamara Williams, the, 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 you're a lawyer, and you guys always talk about, I'm sure in your profession, and Mr. Tunja Baimula will agree, uh, I, I believe, um, ADR, that's alternative dispute resolution, out of court settlement. Aren't people allowed to gather, to associate, to discuss, to agree? Because the, the constitution also um, uh, enshrines you know, freedom of association, freedom sure. of movement, sure. you know, yes. freedom of thought. 
So if if you say, okay, hey guy, um, uh, we are in court. Can we? Can you take it out? Uh, uh, uh settle out of court. Okay. There's a procedure to do with. that. You go to court. You ask leave of court. Say court, allow me to take these matters out, and we go for out of court settlement. Court will grant you leave, or you may go through arbitration. But the point is that parties there must be what you call consensus added. Them. The parties must agree. And the agreement they will come out with must not be at variance with the constitution. Okay? You agree that as you go back to Port Harcourt, the, the appropriation act is now a nullity. It doesn't work that way. That's my take. So let me yeah, but Samuel Williams, it, be, before they go, because the process is still on, before they agree to, there must be a meeting somewhere to say, okay, I want, even if the president is issuing instructions, but I want you to take it out. Then you agree, so okay, I'll take it out of court. You can go to court and then withdraw the cases. You know, if 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 uh, uh, Fubara's governor Kofi. wants to to I, represent I, 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 the I, I, budget I, I, again on his own accord because president asked him to, is is it not his decision based on his freedom of thought as uh, as an individual? So okay, I think I agree with what the president is saying. I will do it. I'm itching to answer you. Uh, take the case of Audi Ogbe. Okay, my signal is talking. Can I just say something? Yes. Okay. Please. If the budget is presented 10 times, what is unconstitutional about it? If it is presented and it's presented 10 times, there's nothing in the Constitution that renders it unconstitutional. What is required is that the budget must be presented to a legitimate house legitimized by the provision of the Constitution. So we are focusing on what I call metalegal factors that are largely irrelevant and immaterial to the issue. The issue is the Constitution requires peace and order. The Constitution demands harmony in the management of the affairs of the people. The Constitution expects that where there is disorder, chaos, the president will intervene because he sought to protect the constitution that requires and demands and commands peace and order and good government. So that exchange, what the president has done, is very valid. And here is an issue. We keep saying that the president brings a document in. You may have discussed prior to that a meeting before the meeting. In any case, Governor Fubara has not reneged on the agreement. The other parties who stand have not reneged on the agreement. Why are we walking up behind the, the blood of River State? Why do we want River State to have uncontrollable high blood pressure? I don't understand that. What people should work for is peace and order, which, is, which are conditions for good government. So my view is that the leaders of uh, River State should work with the document they have, duly signed, authenticated by the parties that are important and material for the purposes of peace, instead of working the high the blood pressure of the party. That's my view. Mm. But uh, uh, Mr. Bayoumi, is it not anti-constitutional for uh, the president? Does it not go against the constitution for the president to dictate to the governor of a state? The, the, the governor of the state said he was dictated to. I think before we begin, we answer that question. <laughs> the governor of the state but what I say, I was dictated to. Now, if you are dictated to... I, I mean, I mean we've, 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 we've heard from... Yeah, Mr. Bobby, we've heard from uh, David Briggs, who was in that meeting, who said that there were several ah. threats issued to the oh, government, oh. and he, he signed that document under duress. You know? Okay, fine. So, I'm an so, adult. I'm the governor. I'm an adult. I'm a governor. A world governor of a state. A, 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 of a, an important state. Voted for by the sovereignty of the people. And now I go to a meeting, and I didn't say I was dictated to, and somebody who went with me said I was dictated to. That's an insult. 
nothing but is, is, is it not possible that the governor is is trying to uh you know count his teeth with his tongue is um watching what he says looking at what may have transpired that I don't know, if there's any truth to this allegation or insinuation that the president literally threatened uh, and forced Sim Fubara to sign that document, did the president, you know, go against the constitution? My point is very simple. If it is possible, then that possibility is within his prerogative as governor. He has the authority of the people delegated authority of the elector to govern as he deems fit. And if he now feels that, oh, <laughs> there is a person he succumbed to it, that's how he considers it appropriate. And people should respect him. They should respect his decision. Instead of presenting him as if he's a weakling, that's not fair to him at all. Okay. It's diminishing. As far as I'm concerned. All right. Uh, uh, Tamara Williams, the River State Governor did not fulfill the number one item on that resolution. Uh, that number one item uh, directed him and his team to withdraw all court cases which had been instituted uh, against the River State House of Assembly, the faction led by Martin Amehule, which is loyal to uh, 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 Governor Wiki, you can see there on your screen. Now, we know that hearing resumed in the suit brought by the Governor against a State House of Assembly uh, before the State High Court sitting in the Ishokpo Ikwere local governor area yesterday. And the Governor's Council, uh, D. Okoro S.A.N., whom you might know, uh, told the court that he does not have any instruction from his client uh, to withdraw the matter. So what do you make of this? knowledge I know about the Governor of Rivers is a man of integrity, is uh, a man of peace, and when you listen to his speech, at uh, the, the recent convocation, um, he said no price is too much for him to pay for reversity to have peace. I am quite confident that he will follow through because he wants peace in reversity. Because his eye is on the bigger picture, not on his ego, not on the way people feel about him. And I can tell you we are proud of him that he rose to the occasion. Now, with respect to what uh, S.A. Edokoro said, you know that uh, uh, you just came out from Abuja, tempers are high, I suspect, but I'm sure that uh, in, the couple of, uh, in the next couple of hours or so, that those matters will be handled. And recall that um, it was today, if I mistake not, that the, the so-called impeachment notice was, was withdrawn. And I just hope and pray uh, that reverse people would take this issue uh, um, with with some level of maturity. So, so as far as you're concerned, uh, that agreement will hold. The governor will go back to this to the House of Assembly and represent the the budget. That's your your reading of all so of this. I, when he said that no price is too much for peace to reign, I I believe that he will follow through. Okay. All right. Th I thank you, Tamara Williams. Very quickly. Very quickly, uh, uh, Tunja Baimi, your, your thoughts on the fact that that case was not uh, withdrawn. Uh, yeah, do you think the governor is backtracking or you, like Tamara Williams, think that he will follow through with that agreement? But there was simply not enough time to brief his lawyer. And I think also some of the terms have to be fulfilled by both sides for the conclusion and the perfecting of the peace agreement. My point with due respect is that we should develop a tendency to work for peace and in this crisis in our political journey. I think this is essential. Everywhere there is crisis, because people simply are not um, thinking deeply. So let us now move away from the preoccupation the war. For war. Let us work for peace. Is that also worrying for war? All right. This is the point I make. Senator Bayami, thank you so much. Uh, it's been quite a very uh, uh, robust and interesting conversation between two lawyers, um, and I've really enjoyed, thoroughly, we've enjoyed having you. Uh, Tunja Bayami is legal practitioner, pro-chancellor of Adekule Adjassing University, Nondo State, from where he joined us via video link. And, of course, uh, Tamla Williams is a former chairman 
of Vokrika local government area real estate, also a lawyer as well, a journalist from Port Hackett, the real estate capital, which is the center of attraction as we speak. Gentlemen, thank you so very kindly for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, my pleasure. And for those of you who've watched at home or from wherever it is you are, uh, thank you very much for being good company all through the week right here on Politics HQ. You can always be sure that next week we'll be back with the conversations you love to have on the hot topics in politics in Nigeria. My name is Kofi Bartels. On behalf of the entire team who have worked so hard to put the show together throughout this week, thank you so much for your time. Have a great weekend. Good night.